As always, if you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own before listening on. What we can do to get this problem started is draw a picture of charge A and charge B. Now in our picture, we've made both charges positive, which makes sense actually, because when we have two positive charges, they're going to repel one another. And that means that QB would be pushed to the right, QA would be pushed to the left. Now how do we know that that's correct? Well, the question noted that particle A exerted a force to the right on particle B. So in this situation, when the two charges are positive, we can see that that is indeed true, that particle A is pushing particle B to the right. Now, initially the distance between them is 13.7, but then that distance will be increased to 17.7. We know from Coulomb's law that the electrostatic force between two charges is inversely proportional to the distance between the charges squared. And one way of writing that idea is to say that the initial force times the initial distance between the charges squared is equal to the final force multiplied by the final distance between the two charges squared. Now our job is to calculate the final force because we're going to move the charges apart and then determine that new force. So what we'll do is divide both sides of this equation by r2 squared so that we can isolate that final force. And if we want next, we can get a little fancy algebraically and rewrite the squares as r1 over r2 and that entire quantity squared. So it would look like this. So now that we have isolated F2 and written it in a convenient form, we can go ahead and plug in the initial force, which the question stated was 2.62 newtons. And then we can also plug in the initial distance of 13.7 millimeters and then the final distance of 17.7 millimeters. Notice that in our setup, the millimeters will cancel out. And then when we perform this computation, we should get roughly 1.57 newtons. We'll notice that the force has diminished, which makes sense because the particles are moving farther apart. We also need to determine the direction of this force because it asks what vector force. And again, they want the vector force that particle B is exerting on A. Well, B is exerting a leftward force on A, as we had determined earlier. So the direction for our force will be to the left. And that completes the answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen and I'll do my best to post an answer to it on YouTube.